the vlogs. Amen. Amen. All right, follow the yellow brick road. Right. And um, as I recall, um, for some reason, God been placing this in my heart of three characters in that movie. And some of y'all might know them. Some of them are in the home. Okay. Amen. You have uh, the scarecrow. No brain. Right? You have the tin man, no heart. Or the heart's all beat up. And then you have the cowardly lion. They all look tough on the outside, tattoos, and they cry for everything. Let me have it. Let me have it. Oh, no, I'm just playing, brother. I'm just playing. <laughs> huh? and, and you know, each one of these characters, they all have something that they want, but they didn't have. Amen. Uh, if you recall, the scarecrow, he revealed that he lacked a brain, right? Like some of you. Come yeah. on. You have no brain. All the drugs you did and all the alcohol poison your brain and or you have half a brain. Amen. But but, but the, the movie d describes that he desired I want to bring. I'm tired of not thinking right. I'm tired of, of not having the smart or, or, or Get into trouble and, and I'm tired of, of falling short. Hello? I want to pray. And the tin man wanted a new heart. He wanted a new heart because his old heart, in the movie says it was breaking. Right? He was all sensitive, he was all emotional and everything got to him. And like some of the guys in the home. They cry over spilled milk. The pastor just said hi to me. I'm going to leave the home. Hello? But he, but he wanted a new heart. A man. And then there was a cowardly lion where, where you know that lions are supposed to be what? The kings of the beasts. Right? But the cowardly lion believed that his fear made him inadequate. It made him weak. It made him uh, 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 run and quit. But he wants to be courageous. Amen? And I believe these three things that you and I need. Something, one of you might have one, and you're missing the other two. Amen? You need one of these characteristics or you need all three of them. Amen? And so these are three characters that have a great need. Right? They have a great need. One needs a brain. One needs a new heart. And one needs to have courage. And you as a Christian, you need all three. Amen? And so, bear with me. Amen? You need a brain, number one. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in Romans 12, 2. Should be on the screen. Romans 12, 2. Can you fix that? Turn that screen for if you look at it. There should be the whole scripture. Everyone can see that? Romans 12, 2, the whole scripture. It should be the whole scripture. There it goes. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable. Amen? Understand that God wants to renew, say renew, your mind. Amen? Your mind. 
Amen. The word renew means to make new. To make new. Because your mind's dirty. Your mind has a filter of, of, of sin. And everything you see is either perverted or wrong. Amen. Understand that the devil, say the devil. He corrupted your mind. All those years in the streets, all those years as you're a slave to the devil and the world, and your mind has been programmed. You know how you program a computer to run the way you want the computer to run? Your mind was programmed by the devil to think like the devil. Amen? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Amen? You know, but there's a difference between your mind and your brain. Hello? The, the Bible makes it clear that your mind does the thinking. And the brain is what you think with. Amen? So the relationship with the mind and the brain is, is, a, is a, the same uh, of, of this example of a pianist and a piano. Amen? The pianist uses the piano to express the music. And your brain and your mind are like that. Amen? Your brain is what you think with. Your mind is what, how it comes out. Amen? When you get saved, God begins to renew your mind. Slowly but surely, your mind is being renewed. Your mind is changing. It should be changing. Amen? You know, when, when we talk about renewing the mind, it means transforming. Say transforming. Transforming. The Bible says that the mind is almost like carnal, the carnality, the carnal mind. And God wants to change that mind to a spiritual mind. Amen? See, a spiritual mind is a mind that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Where your thoughts and everything you think is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Hello? A spiritual mind is a mind that thinks like Jesus. And when you think like Jesus, you begin to respond like Jesus. You begin to walk like Jesus. You begin to act like Jesus and talk like Jesus. Hello? Remember, in the world, your, your mind thought a certain way. Your mind thought like this. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You did me wrong, I'm going to do you wrong. Hello? Then when we get saved, we come to Christianity. And we're all thinking like the world. Your mind still thinks like the streets. You, you still lie. Amen. Hello? You still try to conneive and scheme to get your ways. Hello? Amen. This is why God wants to renew your mind. To renew it. To make it brand new. You know that the Bible says that the battleground of spiritual warfare is in the mind. That's why God wants to renew your mind. At the same time, the devil wants to control your mind. Amen? The mind is the battleground. Say the battleground. Not no playground. It's a battleground. Amen? And that's all you want to think is a playground. The merry-go-round, the seesaw. Well, those are the playground I grew up with. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Sure. See, the Christian who is serious in his walk with God will soon find out that his mind is a battle. And some of you are learning that now. That man, my 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 mind is going to battle. The moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, your mind is being targeted. All these thoughts, 
all these things come to your mind? Your, your mind becomes a battleground between good and evil, between holy and unholiness. Everything's coming to your mind between the spiritual and the flesh. Hello? Our, our, our mind is the devil's target, and he will try to put thoughts in your mind to control you. Evil thoughts. Hello? Angry thoughts. To be angry with your brother. To be angry with your sister. To be anger, angry with a family member. Hello? Go back to Romans 12, 2. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. In other words, don't follow the world's mentality. Don't follow the street mentality or the prison mentality. You're not in a prison. You're not in a program. The home you're in is not a program. Because when you think like a program, your mind begins to, you begin to walk like a program and begin to uh, 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 perform like you're in a program. Hello? You're in the house of God. You're here to serve the Lord. That's why we have that sign when you walk in. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Ain't no program. Amen? Don't let your the world brainwash you. But let the word wash your brain. Hello? Yes. Don't let the world brainwash you. But let the word of God wash your brain. Hello? Don't let the world do the thinking for you. Hello? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transform means to change. But be changed. Change your life by renewing your mind. So the only way to live a transformed life is to get your mind renewed. Amen? And to have a renewed mind, you need to get your mind filled and reprogrammed with the Word of God. You gotta reprogram your mind. You gotta reprogram your software. You need an upgrade. Hello? You need an upgrade. How many get your phone? How many times do your phone gets upgraded? Almost every year, right? Now uh, iPhone 11 is out or it's coming out. And everyone's going crazy. Hello? Go back to the flip phone. You'll be fine. Amen? But we'll have the patience for it, right? To text, remember texting on the, on the flip phone? You had to push the phone number two times to get one letter or, you know. You need to upgrade. You need to upgrade your mind. Get to reload your mind. Reprogram. Hello? The Word of God. Who's the Word of God? Jesus. Who's the Word of God? Jesus. So who's going to change your mind? Jesus. So you need Jesus to change your mind. There's an old song we sing Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the new time. And Jesus, when the sun goes down, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus, Jesus, when the sun goes down, you need Jesus, 24-7, amen, when you begin to read the word, Jesus begins to wash your mind. How many wear the same clothes daily? Or do you wash You wash your clothes, right? There's the importance of a washing. 
And there's a point of washing your mind. Because your, your brain gets dirty. Your mind gets dirty. Your mind gets dirty. I remember uh, when I was in the home in San Antonio, and I was washing dishes almost every day. Right? And I remember one day, uh, it was late at night, and I was the only one washing dishes. They, they kicked everyone else out and left me in the kitchen. And, and, and we come back from church, and it's like piles of dishes. Over 300 plates, over 300 cups, and something, everything. I'm like, oh, Jesus. That begins to get upset. Right? That begins to argue with myself, why am I doing this? Amen? And, and, and I'm there washing dishes, angry. But try not to break a dish. <laughs> Spraying the water, fighting the water, all right. And then once I come down, God says, "You know what, son? I'm doing something here in life." Yes. And He's telling me one day when I was washing a dish, I was washing a plate. He goes, "How many times have you washed that plate today?" And this plate, I look at it, look like all the other plates. And I said to myself, talking to God, I'll probably wash this plate maybe four or five times today. Because that's what I do with all my vessels. Because my children are my vessels. And I have to wash them every day. Because they get dirty. Your mind gets dirty every day because of sin. Because of what you watch. Just on, on, just on Facebook. On Instagram, all these things that come to your mind, or TV, everything that comes to your mind, it's cool, everything that's coming to your mind is getting filthy and dirty. And every day, God, I got love. Father God, wash my mind. Protect my mind. I pick the blood over my mind. To the renewing of your mind, it takes time, but it, it's a process. It's a process. It doesn't change overnight. Hello? When you read the word, Jesus renews your mind, but many Christians don't like to read their Bible. A lot of you have a Bible, it's put in the shelf, collecting dust. And what's even sad is you even have a Bible app that you didn't even open up. And God has made it so simple that all you have to do is push play and let me read it for you. And you're too lazy to hear the Bible. You rather open your fantasy football app. Hello? That's me. You know, I'm always checking my fantasy football app. Or you ever open your Facebook app, Snapchat, Instagram, games, pool, eight ball pool. <laughs> they got the laugh because they're right. <laughs> but when you see that by like, man, and you wonder why you still think the same. You still wonder why you're not changing? Because the only time you renew your mind is in Bible studies, Sunday mornings, Wednesday, and your mind's not being transformed. It's a battleground. See, the renewing of your mind takes time, but it's a process. Amen. And many Christians are changing because they are not allowing the word of God to renew their lives. You still, you're still stealing. You're still stealing. I understand because I was there before. I was a thief. My hands were, were, were very sticky. Very sticky. Every time I'm walking in the store, I was walking out with something. Every time I walk somewhere, I was walking out with something. And some of you are still the same way. You see your brother's shampoo? 
Or are you pouring in your shampoo? <laughs> Sticky fingers. <coughs> you see someone's pen, you take the pen. Oh, that's a nice pen. You might say, oh, that's just a pen. But it's still sticking. It's still a law. Hello? It's still lying. It's still lying. Hello? The Bible says when, when you're walking with God, there's, there's truth. There's truth in you. You might be guilty, but you still tell the truth. Hello? You're still greedy. You're still stingy with your money. It's all about you. My problem with some of the guys is that some don't have money, but they don't pay rent, right? They don't pay bills, water bill, electric bill, gas bill. Hello? And, and when something happens in the home and, and, and there's an emergency, they oh, I got $20, you could, uh, you know, fix this or that. And they ask, can I get a, can I get the money for it? And it comes to the pastor, I got a receipt that I spent 20 bucks and I, can you refund me 20 bucks? Hello, oh, greedy, stingy, tight. So tight that he walk, he squeak. <laughs> Hello. You, 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 you don't forgive. You have a hard time forgiving when you're offended. When you're offended, you can't forgive. You don't pay your tithes. Hello. And if you say you're reading the Word of God, your your mind will be renewed. And there's no other way to renew your mind but by reading the word. Amen. I can preach to you. Victor can preach to you. My dad can preach to you. Kevin and, and all the preachers can preach to you. Teach you all day, morning, noon, and night. Counsel you. Work with you one on one. Hello? We can pray for you. But if, if, if your mind never changes, you will never change. Your, your mind will never think like Jesus until you begin to read the word of God on your own. <coughs> in Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which also which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ, let it be in you. The mind of Jesus. How many of you would, would love to have the mind that Jesus has. How many of you know that you don't have it? That's a weak amen. amen. You need a new mind. You need to ask God, Lord, give me a new brain. If I only had a brain. I should have played those little songs right there that they were singing. Number two, you need a new heart. In Ezekiel 36, 26, the Bible says like this. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. See, God needs to remove your old heart because it's no good. It's damaged. Your heart is damaged. Your heart it was was uh, uh, stomped on, crushed, spit on. Hello? Destroyed, broken. Your heart is all jacked up from your past, from relationships. Hello? From people, from your family, from your own dad or from your own mom. Or from someone that hurts you and your heart's all damaged. It's wounded. It's no good. Hello? Mm -hmm. So God will make you a new heart. He'll give you a new heart. 
and remove your old heart. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, look what it says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? See, Jeremiah said the heart is all jacked up. The heart is all messed up. The heart's full of sin. It's full of deceit. Bitterness. Hurt. And God wants to give you a new heart. Your past hurt you. Your husband hurt you. Your wife hurt you. Or your ex hurt you. Something damaged your heart. The heart is the root of everything about your life. The way you love people. The way you respond. And a lot of we respond out of resentment. Out of hatred. Out of bitterness because of the damage. Hello? God wants to heal that heart. And God wants to restore the heart. And God wants to give you a brand new heart. And the heart that God will give you is his heart. God will put his heart in you. A heart that's that's a, a, a unconditional love. A heart that will love unconditionally. A heart that is like Jesus. Hello? See, the, the our heart is all jacked up. It's where sin dwells. It's where all evil comes from our hearts, from within our hearts. And you need, to, you need to ask God to create in you a new heart. Like King David said, Father, Lord, create in me a new heart. Create in me a new heart. Because my heart's all jacked up. David says, Sin, I, I was conceived in sin. My heart is all jacked up from birth. I can't fix it. A wife can't fix your heart. Or a, another person can't fix your heart. Hello? The only person that can fix your heart is Jesus. He's the only one. And not Jesus Martinez. Alright? You need to put on a new heart. And you need to ask God, God... Give me a new heart. A new heart. The Bible says, put on the heart of compassion. <coughs> compassion. Love. Now that you're, you're able, you're not able to love people fully with your heart. But we love people with the heart of God. Doesn't matter what they do to you, what they say about you, how many times they stab you in the back, your heart will still love them. Because that, that's the heart of Christ. That's the heart of God. And when people see that, man, that, that person has to be saved. That has to be God's heart. You need to ask God to give you a brand new heart. Amen. You need a new brain. You need a new heart. Your heart is jet damaged. I can sense that in my spirit. A lot of damaged hearts. You have a smile. But inwardly, you're sad, depressed, discouraged. But your heart is all damaged. And you're like that tin man wounded crying over everything. Then he gets all uh, uh, what was that? Uh, rusty. Rustic. That's how you are as a Christian. You're rusty because of all the damage, tears, depression. Can't move. Can't love. But what was the key? The, the guy will put what, oil 
right? Dorothy will put oil on, on his arms, his neck, his mouth, and the oil will uh, loosen him up to, to move. And he needs to be anointed with God's oil, the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing. Amen. Number three, I'm almost done, amen. Is you need courage. You need to have courage. Amen. If you want to make it in this dark world, if you want to make and reach your calling in life, if you want to be the husband God called you to be, the wife God called you to be, the disciple God called you to be, you need to have courage. Because we're, we're in a battle. And sometimes it's lonely. Yeah. Sometimes it seems like, man, you're, you're, it seems like you're fighting all by yourself. God tells Joshua, and Joshua 1 9, he says this in Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. One problem that we face in, in, in our world, in our society, in our church, is that a lot of people don't know how to handle pressure. You don't know how to handle pressure. You don't know how, how to handle spiritual warfare. You don't know how to handle when the devil attacks you and, and, and you get all scared and tremble. One of the things that we find is that a lot of young people do not know how to handle pressure because of their parents do not know how to handle pressure. And this could be the reason why so many people turn to drugs, turn to alcohol, and some even commit suicide because they don't want to face those giants in their lives. See, in, in our world today, in our society, we all have giants that you need to face. You got a giant to face. And that giant could be fear. That giant could be a, a fear of failure. Now, I'm not good enough. Hello? And one of the advantages that Christ has given us that God has equipped you with is with courage. And God encourages you that you can conquer the world. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hello? Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Hello? Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, he says this, in the world, in this world, we have tribulation. In this world, we have problems. In this world, you're going to go through all kinds of craziness. But take courage, for I have overcome the world. Jesus, I already have overcome it. Take courage. You know what changes a wimp into a champion? You know what, what makes a, a shepherd boy to a giant killer? Oh. You know what makes a failure, a failure into a success? Courage. See, David, talk about King David, when he was a young kid, a shepherd boy, David had a source of courage. And the courage that he got came from the Spirit of the Lord. Hello? When the anointing of God was upon David, all his fear went away. All his, all his anxiety went away. Hello? 
my question is, how do we develop courage? How can you develop the spirit of courage? Say courage. Courage. Tell your neighbor, put them up, put them up. You have courage. You got to first by winning those small battles. You got to win the small battles first. See, David, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, 34, check this out. But David said to Saul, this is when he was about to fight Goliath, right? He said, your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took the lamb from the flock, I went out after him and attacked him and rescued him from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Verse 36. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted the army of the living God. And David said, the Lord, say the Lord, the Lord, who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to him, go, David, and may the Lord be with you. Amen. You got to start winning the small battles. And you already have. You already have victory over small things. And that same Victory you take with you, taking uh, uh, facing your giant. So we build a winner's attitude by overcoming the small problems in your life. Your small problems, your small issues, you learn to have a winner's attitude. See, David started winning. The battles with the small things, the lion and the bear. Oh my. And when he won those battles, he was ready to fight the giant, the lion. David had to build the character of courage. You had to build up the character of courage with the little things first. Man, see the battle with the lion and the bear were fresh in the mind of David, and he knew that God will be faithful with him and will help him while he's facing Goliath. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7 For as he thinks within himself, so he is. Man, he who says eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. I'm going to focus on the first part. For as he thinks within himself, so he is. Amen. Amen. If you think you're a quitter, you're going to quit. If you think you're not going to have courage, you're not going to have no courage. Amen. So your thinking needs to be, I could do all things through Christ. Amen. Your thinking needs to be, it's too soon to quit. It's too soon to quit. I came too long just to throw, give up right now. Amen. Amen. I remember when I was in the home, I was in San Antonio for two and a half years, and and, and there was a battle on the face. I'm like, man, I was confused, and I don't know what to do. And, and I said to myself, well, I can't just walk away from this now. I already got too much discipline to just give up. You know how much hell I went to in a home in the academy? Just to go home and and, and walk away from everything I, I went through? I gotta finish this out. I gotta finish this out. When, when we decided to leave the outcry in the audio, my, my dad left the, the outcry in 2011, about February, I believe it was around that time. February or, or in March. And when I got the news, it was in March. I was like, what? Like, I didn't understand. Alcra was everything. Alcra was was pumping my blood. Right? 
it, it was a it was a hit. And I said to myself, man, I can't just leave like this. We need to see what happens. We need to pray. We need to seek the Lord. I couldn't just quit. I wanted to. Can't just quit though. And what helped me to think like that was I was on, on, on discipline. The last time I was on discipline in San Antonio, I was on discipline for two and a half months. And in the last month of discipline, I was kicked out of the academy. And I was kicked out of the pastor's class. And I was kind of kicked out of the home as well. And, and I, I was basically living in the field, pulling weeds all day. From 8 a.m. in the morning to 12 minutes, I was all day in the field pulling weeds. I couldn't even go into the, the uh, kitchen to get food. They had to take my food to me. They would come to get me to come take a restroom break for five minutes and go back to the field. And I remember in those times, I was like, man, I just want to give up. I just want to quit. Now I remember, man, I came too far too quick. Came up too far too quick. I'm going to continue one more day. One more day. Now each day it got easier. Ah, uh, this is that. This ain't nothing. I had a big wall of weeds. I had a big wall of weeds. A fort. And one day the neighbor came and, and he, he took some of the weeds, right, for his uh, donkeys or wherever he had. But hey, come back with that weeds. <laughs> Chase him down. He came in with a wheelbarrow, barrel, got some of the weed, and he went that way back. That's all my hard work. But keep this in your mind. It's always too soon to quit. You came too far to give, give up. And many people make the mistake of quitting too soon. You walk away too soon when God's about to move. When God's about to bless you, you leave the home. I've seen it so many times in the home. I grew up in the home all my life, and I've seen it every time God's moving some person's life, and God's about to bless them, bring back their family, and they walk quit. The kitchen got too hot. See, the faith and courage you built today will prepare you for tomorrow's battles. The courage and faith you built today will prepare you to face tomorrow's battles. Amen. Amen. If you're discouraged today, remember it's too soon to quit. The Holy Spirit will come just on time. He'll come and catch you just on time. God won't let you fall over. Amen. Think God's going to let you fall over? You came too far. And God does so much to get you saved and to bring you to the home and to put you in a place where you're protected for you to just fall over. If you fall over, it's because you jumped. See, God will bring courage to your heart. And he will cause you to rise up to be a fighter. To be a winner. To take the land. To fulfill your calling. To be the husband God called you to be. To be the father God called you to be. To be the pastor God called you to be. To be the home for that God called you to be. Hello. God told Joshua in one night. Haven't I commanded you? It's a commandment to you to be strong and courageous. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Strong and courageous are two different things. You gotta be strong. You gotta have a, a, a rhino skin. You gotta have rhino skin. Tough. You gotta be courageous. And this is the key. It says, do not tremble. Do not be dismayed. Don't, don't, 
get scared, don't get scared, don't be afraid. It says, for the Lord your God is with you. God is what? With, with you. God is with you. Take courage in Jesus. Yes. My last scripture is Mark eleven twenty four, And this is my conclusion. It says, therefore I say to you, all these, all things for which you pray and ask, believe. That you have received them. And they will be granted to you. If you need a new mind, a new brain, ask God. God, give me a new brain. Give me a new mind. If you need a new heart, ask God. God, give me a new heart. If you need courage, ask God, give me courage. Believe when you ask. Stand with me. Say a prayer when you say, Father, Father. In, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I recognize, I recognize I'm, all jacked up, I'm all jacked up, and I need you. And I, need you. I ask you, I ask you to, forgive me to forgive me for all my sins. For all of my sins. Come, into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my, Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me, give me a new mind, a new mind, renew, renew a new heart, a new heart in my spirit, in my spirit. Give me courage, give me courage to fight my battles, to fight my battles every day, every day. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Let's worship Jesus. Let's lift our hands up and and just thank God for the new.